I was always pretty funny, uh, like as a kid and it like mitigated bullying. And so that was, <laughs> that was very helpful. And then I'd say, gosh, around like 18, I was like into acting. And then I took a like UCB class when I was like 21. And then I was like doing improv and I, I think it was in my, like used to be like 301 or something. I met these guys that they were like, we're going to like open mics. You should come. You're funny. Let's, you know. And I was like, oh, I don't know like what I talk about. And then I had kind of realized unbeknownst to me that I actually had like been consistently writing jokes, but I just, they were observations. Like it was like journaling, but they were jokes. And I was like, oh, I guess I do have like a few minutes of material. So I started doing open mics when I was like, yeah, I guess 23 years old. Um, and then, yeah, I was just like, you know, you suck at first and you just keep going and maybe you get a laugh and a smattering of them here and there. And you're like, OK. And then, I mean, the more you do something, I think that we just have we're very uncomfortable with being amateurs. So we don't pursue anything new because it's kind of embarrassing, especially the older you get. It's hard to be new at something, you know, so it's like you don't want to be you know, consider like, like, oh, I'm dumb at this thing. It's hard to learn things just the older you get because the rigidity, just not only of your like mind and spirit, but just your actually ability to absorb information and data like really dwindles as well. Sure. But I think when you're younger, you just are like, fuck it. You just fling yourself into things. So I'm, I'm really happy that I was pretty fearless when I was young. And that's when I like started DJing and acting and doing comedy. And then I just have been doing, and now it's like, I'm good at all of those things, but it's because I've been doing all of those things for a long time, you know? Welcome fellow Lushes. Come on in, pull up a bar stool and enjoy some cocktails with dimples and the beard. <laughs> So you don't want to show the puke bucket I just handed to you. There it is. There it is. Just in case. Just in case. Oh. So it, so it's not for drinking. Kids. It's not for too much dope. Kids. Not for drugs. Kids. What is it for? What is it from? I overdosed on Zen. <laughs> Thought I was ready for six. I'm not. Oh, why is it one of the funniest things I've ever heard? I over, over overdosed on Zin. Not not Zinfandel. Zinfandel. There's 13 year old kids out there that'll do four of those. I'm gonna have to Zin. shit during this podcast. <laughs> what's gonna happen? No wonder smokers always have to shit. Nicotine must make you shit. I think it does. I think I've heard that. Fuck. Oh, th that really? I might have to take a poop break. Well, you got. Seven minutes. Mm. <laughs> hmm. uh, and we're off. Welcome back. So you're so you're a fan of the chill. Chill, motherfucker. Chill. Chill. The new um new, the, the 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 latest fashion for you. The latest Vice. crave. Vice. The Vice. It's a Zen Vice. Vice. But it's when it when it says chill, how can you feel it's bad? Oh, excuse me. Does nicotine make you tired? I, excuse me. Makes you makes you want to puke, makes you want to poop, and it makes you tired. Mm -hmm. I think I want one. That's a beautiful. No, I can't believe they haven't signed this yet. That's a beautiful endorsement right there. I mean, <laughs> are you trouble shitting in the morning? Yeah, you're trouble not puking right away when you get up in the morning and going to bed at night. If you're constipated, take us in. Take us in. All right, can we start over? Can we start for real now? Welcome oh, back. No, I, 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 can I. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. We'll open the tavern and then we'll. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. And we'll get this shit show. Here's what I'm here. I'll say what I'm not saying. Bup, 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 bup. I'm not saying your misery is making me smile, but I have like three minutes to to get professional. I got to get my <laughs> shit together. <laughs> So, welcome back to another episode of Cocktails with Dimples in the Beard, Zen Edition. Puke Edition. No. I have not, but I don't, I'm still, I don't know about this drink. I gotta, I gotta wait and see what happens here. I'm gonna have to, whoo yoop. Yeah, that's a, that's a tasty, uh, 
is the old fashioned right there. So first and foremost, thank you to the Roach for a wonderful time in Chicago. I, it's, I, I don't spit it out, man. Ooh, I'm in rough shape right now. I'm going to need to get a lot better in five minutes. So, so thank you. He, I think he's trying to say is thank you for, so for being so nice and accommodating and uh, just that one hell of a guy. Thank you for uh, coming back to our hotel room. Yeah. Wait, is that the wrong <laughs> We didn't record everything. Didn't, didn't, but um, we kind of did. Yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. So expect another. Well, Roach. You'll, you'll have seen it by now, but he is back no, again. No, they won't have seen it by now. Oh, yeah. I'm... Or yes, they will have seen it by now. I can't fucking keep up right now. You can't even talk. They will have seen it by now. This is true. So it'll be like a few weeks old. Not coming up, but it's it, it had it happened. Um, That is from our hotel in Chicago. We went down to see him for the weekend. Not one night, but two nights. We. <laughs> I feel really unprofessional right now. I should probably drink some of this. Uh, went and saw his comedy show. We'll laugh our asses off. Um, it does show you that there is twice, both nights, correct? One oh, night did you say both nights? Nope. Uh, I was getting to the second night, but that's fine because I was going to mention the first night we laughed our asses off. Um, it was a dead crowd because the fuck the guy's fucking funny, and uh, even both nights he was hilarious. So, well, that's his job is to be hilarious, though. and he and he succeeded. So some people. Um, bad crowd, but that I would want to dwell on that because it was a great weekend. It was a great, great food, great drinks, and great company hanging out with the roach. I've never yawned so much. <laughs> I didn't know tobacco or nicotine made you so tired, or anybody so tired. Hmm. I'm gonna slap you to wake you up. I might need one, yeah. Just a good, all right. Welcome back. Oh, wait, we already did that. <laughs> are we starting over a third time or a fifth time or what do you want to do over there what's going on start, start over um tonight's guest nina tar another comedian very 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 funny lady she's she's uh dipped her toe in a lot of things she's all over the place not just comedian funny. actress <laughs> dj 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 how do you say that Dudge. She's a dudge. She's a dudge. That is so much better. All right. Oh, Jesus Christ. Wow. The fuck? Wow. We need uh oh, that mic stinks now. Stink a vision on this thing for you to enjoy as much as I did. This is oh my kids said the funny kids say the darndest things. Wasn't that a show? Oh, they should this, we should make a show and say the darndest things. As we can or as she learns to ride her bike, I'm I'm biking I'm biking around with her, and she bikes where I was. Wow, that pungent! Yeah. Wow, and I I had I I hadn't showered yet that day, and she says she Dad, I'm in your stink path. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, my dear, you're in my stink path. So there's another thing me and uh, Gracie have in common. And you finally can no, I can't I can't say. Now I'm gonna have to edit that out. Oh my bad. Both being in your stink path over the years. Oh, I thought you mean you could learn to ride a bike this weekend. <laughs> I finally did. That's right. Who's proud of me? That's Who's really, proud of me? That's really where I thought you were going with that. No, just being in your stink path. This um, looks fantastic. I hope I can drink it. <laughs> mm. Don't forget your uh, keep bucking over. I'll show it again. Oh, that is. Oof. Should we leave it there? That would be awkward, wouldn't it? If there was just a bucket on the table for the whole episode. What's going on? Why are you staring at me? <laughs> What's happening? Because in my head, I'm saying, do I just ignore it and move on? Or do I tell you that you get a chunk of orange <laughs> on your mustache? That's fucking rude. Jesus. Uh, you're, you, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I don't think we, no, I don't think we keep it up there. Because I think uh, that's... <laughs> That's amazing. Let's see if I can. You know, it'd be funny would that be to have this on when she comes on and see if she says anything or she just goes through the whole episode wondering why I'm wearing a bucket on my head. <laughs> uh, well, it's under the table now. 
Well, that's wrong. We need it accessible in case. Well, believe me, if I have to throw up on the podcast, I'm crawling under the table. So it's not going to be something that anybody sees. So is it my month? No, we don't want it on camera, but we we uh, it's clean. We we definitely want it. Do we in the bucket and not the studio? Do we? Are you going to do 3D against the camera? Oh, I had a. Uh, no, it's a new camera. What do we think of the camera, people? What do you think of the new camera? A couple episodes in, probably four now. Um, looking good, looking good. Big improvement worth the three thousand dollars that we paid for it. Let us know in the comments. No, that's what we. That's what we Let paid for the. Know. That's what we paid for the weekend in Chicago to justify to our uh, uh, the, the cost of the new camera. So, Chicago. oh yeah, I, I I don't know if you heard me when you walked off to the. Little little ladies' room earlier. You went golfing this weekend, entertained some clients. Did you save the receipt? Absolutely. All right, that's a write-off. Well, you bet. Did you talk about the podcast? Absolutely. Non-stop. Non-stop. I bet they got sick of that shit, didn't they? I don't know why they. Does our do? Well, it was, it was funny because I, I was talking about the podcast, right? Yeah, it was going great, and then all of a sudden, you know, by the fourth hole, I'm going, "Where are all those guys?" They kept. They're always like holes ahead of me, and I. I Kept trying to catch up, but yeah. they just kept. Uh, they kept saying, "We'll be, you know, we'll wait for you." And then they didn't. Three thousand nine hundred and some odd subscribers on YouTube, and not one of them is somebody I know. Thanks, friends. Oh, really? I don't know. I'm just. I'm saying it. You're, for just, a fact, you're just dumbass. whining. You're just whining. Well, wouldn't it be nice if your friends supported you? Don't it you, would be. Isn't that a nice thing when friends support friends? You're not my, yeah, you guys aren't our friends anymore. I mean, if you're watching this and you're a friend, even if you're doing the friend thing, which I advise all my friends to do, friend. is just throw it up, don't listen, <laughs> and smash the like button. All right? Do you want to be friends with famous podcasters or not? Think of all the perks that are already coming our way. I mean... Could have hung out with we us. had Josh Potter in our hotel room this past. Now I'm firing on all cylinders. We had Josh Potter in our hotel room this past weekend. That doesn't happen without the podcast. I mean, no, so it, it doesn't. I mean, it may be on like a dating app. It could have happened, but that's that's completely different lifestyle. Just because he sent you shoulder hair porn doesn't mean he's hooking up with you. And we, I have for, forgot to ask him. I do want right. do want to ask him if he's okay with that. That's right. We were going to ask him that, but I, I I just want to go on the record as saying that's one of the, the thing. Josh, Josh. Josh, I think I told you that at least 12 times this last weekend. But you did. That was one of the funniest fucking things I've ever laughed at. Although we did podcast for like an hour and a half before I was like, are you ever going to say thanks for that? I told him the night before when we were out drinking. Well, I get that, but I wanted it on the podcast. Yeah, that's true. So in my head, we already did. What um, a guy. We, we, it wasn't as long evenings as the first time we went out, but it uh, doesn't matter. It was fun. And uh, he, uh, Josh, Josh, he, I now fired. have a gambling habit thanks to him. Have you bet some more? I bet every bet every day. And are you winning? No, that's why. <laughs> Shit. Well, you got some free money yeah. from using his promo code, right? Promo code yes. Roach. Use the promo code DraftKings. Was it Potter he, or Ro I don't remember? He got me signed up that night. That's a salesman right there. The uh, I like how he hockey bet. game went in double overtime. And there we were watching it, and by the double <laughs> overtime, he said, sign up, I can still bet on it, and I did. Who was playing? Two hockey teams. Who won? That one that won. You didn't win the bet, though. Oops. I and I didn't win, bucket. but neither did he. I'm gonna... He won a different one earlier, so he's, he's, uh, he's a good gambler. He's a smart gambler. He got me to sign up. Tricky <laughs> bastard. I think uh, they call that a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> He probably, he probably. Hey, wait a minute! He probably got a free hundred bucks in bets off of that. That's why he could continue to bet in that night. And after he signed up, he was like, uh, "I'm done for the night." I signed up, and boom, boom, boom! They restocked oh, his offers. Man, good thinking. Now I got it. But yeah. now I'm like you are to Zen. I'm to gambling. I also want to mention um, another Josh. Oh, who is at the Josh Potter shows? Josh Ocean. Thomas, hilarious, King phenom. And then I, I, I saw he like the right after we saw him this past weekend, he was out in San Diego headlining a bunch of shows. So I, I, I feel like for a host, we got a pretty fucking big comedian. We got a good one, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, a lot of times, and maybe it's only because I uh, never mind. I don't want to. It's funny. It. Yeah, he was good. He was he was funny. I, he was, I like the I like the all of them. 
yeah, they were very good. It was a, it was a good it was a good lineup. Good, it was good a good lineup. lineup. I don't, the, the, I, and I, and I like that uh, they're all different styles. You yeah. know, as as they go, the middle guy was a completely different style. Uh, uh, I, I don't know what you call. I don't. We don't have to describe these styles, but they were all funny in their own right. And and one other shout out and thank you. And I, I I'm going to get her name wrong. Um, thank you. Because she was sitting directly across from us at the Josh Potter show. Oh, yeah. Um, I know her last name is Ragan, and it uh, her profile does say yes, I'm related to him. So I think it's Ash. Ash is it just Ash? Uh, I can't. I can't picture in my head right now. It starts. It's something like that. And I'm sorry for not not knowing your name right off the bat. But thank you for the shout out on on the social. She. I can guarantee if he was in high on Zin, he would remember. I think it's finally. It's finally. So thank you to her. And maybe you'll see her on the podcast someday. Uh, someday. It's possible. We'll we'll get it right. We'll we'll maybe you can enter, you know, like edit it in. Her name is Becky hey, Reagan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do that. But we'll go. So we are ready to start. We are ready to start. Before that, do it. We mentioned before. Smash the like button. Give a comment. Uh share, 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 comment, comment. Tell us how all our cameras are looking. How handsomely devilishly dancing we look since we Got the new cameras. Would be great. Watch the podcast like I used to watch Shania Twain videos. On mute, it still counts the same. But you're going to miss out. Just saying. Well, anyways, let's not keep a pretty lady waiting. So without further ado, Nina Tar. Hey. Hello. Sorry for the delay. It made me like update my fucking Zoom stuff. Oh, no. So I was like, no, I was like, you're good. I'm I'm coming down from a Zen buzz, so this was this was good. That I've I never had... done a Zen. I've never oh. done a Zen. What, have you? Are you? Well, have you stop ever... everything. Go buy something when we want to watch you because no, that's smoke, ridiculous. I smoke analog cigarettes. Okay? okay, that's what I was wondering. So, how many milligrams of nicotine are in a normal cigarette? <laughs> Any idea? Just do you care? <laughs> I don't care. I don't know. I didn't know that that. Uh, no, I don't know. I have no idea. But I'm not looking at milligrams. I'm looking at I'm just, you know, I mean, maybe it's aesthetic, but also old habits die hard. I mean, yeah. I started smoking. I was like a teenager. So mm. do you do you still get a buzz from it at all? The nicotine or. I don't think I'm that like maybe I'm not that aware of okay. my body. <laughs> like, I, I, I have no idea. I just had to take a little 10 minute nap on the couch because I was starting to sweat and. <laughs> yeah this is kind of fun well yeah it, it, he went so last weekend he did a three and was like "Ooh, my four in front of my head blah 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 yeah and then this today he's like i'm gonna do a six and i had to go get him a puke bucket so <laughs> you tell a, me is there a zin shortage i heard about that there's a zin shortage not in wisconsin we got it everywhere <laughs> no we're good <laughs> you're like pork sausage uh fucking zins we're stacked Ooh, cheese, cheese, cheese. We got cheese. Yes. Laker. Have you been to the fine state of Wisconsin? Um, can you let me think of what a big city is there? Madison. Yeah, Madison, Milwaukee. Uh, I've been to Milwaukee. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like for one day on tour. Okay. I don't. I have nothing to say. I'm sure it's lovely. Yeah. Well, it's a, we have a nice. So let's introduce her, but then yeah, yeah. I got to get the. Uh, but you have your count your character Peggy. Who's a cheesehead? Well, I feel like that's, I just am good at voices. You are. So, very. You're right. Introduce. We're joined by actress, comedian, DJ. You got writer. You got writer. You got actress. Yes. Nina Tarr. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Thanks for having me. Thank you. First thing I want to ask cheers Cheers to you. I'm drinking an energy drink. It's not. not I got. I got one of those too. I got my prime yes, back here. Energy. I got I got my weed here. I got my <laughs> drink. So I said, so, this, this, so what is he not addicted to? I mean, he's like just... a dissociative nightmare over here. You're <laughs> like, I got all of these things I must ingest in order to get as far out of here as possible. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm trying to gain balance back from that zin. I don't know what to do if I should drink or smoke weed. I'm like, so should I have a glass of milk? Is it like more of an acidic and I need to add a base or something? Something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I should have researched this before I developed this habit. Anyway, now that he's addicted, the zin shortage is going to happen now. I do have a bit of an addictive personality. <laughs> um, where does where does the Instagram name Pizza Party sixty nine come from? It was my AOL or AIM rather in high school. And you just ran with that bad boy. 
you know, Instagram used to be a photo. I don't know if you remember, but when it's in its dawning and its yeah. inception, the genesis of Instagram was for people. You could only you couldn't upload photos to it. You would use it as a filter. So you would take photos with it and be like, it looks like a Polaroid camera, you know? So oh, really? Oh, yeah, I don't remember so that. I, I, so I got Instagram when Instagram like first started in 2010 because my boyfriend at the time was a photographer. And he's like, there's a really cool photo app called <laughs> Instagram. And I got it and I was like, oh, I'll just put my AI up. Like, it's a stupid name. It's just a yeah. joke. No, it worked. So how did you get it in high school, though? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> I mean, you said it's been there forever, but again, oh, what did it stem from? Wait, what's yeah? Is there a story? Did you 69 for the first time at a pizza party? <laughs> No, I'm a lady. I don't tell. I don't sixty nine and tell. Um, the pizza delivery no, guy. What's, all right. Oh, it's, I don't know. It's funny. Yeah. I like it. It rolls off the tongue. It does. Uh, you know. Yeah. I, I mean, I wouldn't look too deeply into it. This isn't like a national treasure sort of thing where I'm just like, I'm like, it actually. I'm glad you asked because uh, it's really deep. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot to expound upon this question. So, when the, our interview was over, I really thought we were going to spend an hour talking about pizza parties. <laughs> you're the first geniuses who ever thought to ask me about that. <laughs> you're like, fuck, I don't have any other questions. <laughs> now that you, you settled that. Okay. <laughs> so in the, in your lexicon, because you do a lot of things, what what is what is the what is the one big love? Is it comedy? Is it acting? Is it DJing? Um, I probably comedy and acting is my love. It's just I don't know if you guys know about this. Very hard to make money doing that. So then I make money doing the other thing, which other people find hard to make money in. But weirdly, I make money DJing. Oh, OK. So DJing is your primary source of lucrative income. That's okay. what I do for a living. Like I do a lot of music direction. So like I I get hired by like nice like hotels and shit to like make their playlists. Oh. and stuff and i do that for like a few places uh around the country so so, so getting into it was it out of necessity necessity or a love back in no a love i started listening i was like a punk in middle school and i was like listening to music very intently probably starting the age of like 13 so then i was like and i was very into like you know obscure like you know, uh, new wave and post punk and like early eighties hardcore and stuff. And then I like then got into soul and funk and boogie and disco and you know EBM and all of these like very specific kind of uh, you know. And so I I just listen to music all the time and I categorize. I, I like love making playlists and have since I was like in high school and uh, would yeah. make like CDs and stuff and. Uh, yeah, I just, I didn't, I was like a burnout. Like, I didn't know that it could be a job. That's rad. That's, I, that's yeah. And you, and you do all your DJing with vinyl, which makes it even that much cooler. Yeah. You know, it's funny now that I, so I moved to New York like four years ago and, yeah. uh, there's so like, I, when I was in LA, I think I only did vinyl. I think okay. it was like very, and so I, or I, I learned like some other mediums, like, you know, it was like Serato or whatever. Cause sometimes you have to just bend to the will of what the, venue will provide like equipment wise uh, mm -hmm. but, but i primarily just did all vinyl and then in new york it's so many places don't have turntables so i do like you know digital and it's so fucking like like carding vinyl in the city is like tough like i only do one vinyl night a week here okay when I, was in LA, I did like four a week oh, okay yeah, i was gonna ask if that you ran into issues where people are like here's my request and you're like yep not my like, category sorry well, that's, that's the best because i first of all no <laughs> dj makes no DJ wants a request. The only time it's appropriate to ask a DJ for a request is if you hired them. Yeah. It is only, if you're paying me, that's mm. fine. You hired me for your party, your wedding. I'll play whatever you'd like. Yeah. You're just a random person at a bar and you're like, excuse me. <laughs> I think I have the authority, even though I'm a dental hygienist and I don't even really like music. I couldn't describe to you genres or artists, but I think I should be the arbiter of taste in this scenario. And I think I should tell you what to play. And when you don't have it, when, because they think that you just have the internet, like Everything. they think that you're on the internet. <laughs> yeah. And so you're like, no, I have a prepare. But even if it's like, you know, um, even if I'm not limited by the medium of vinyl, I think they don't understand that it's also like, I just, yeah, I don't have 
readily available and i don't want to fucking play your dumbass fucking song right you're you're oh, there yeah. for yeah you're there for a reason they hired you because you know how to set a mood i'm the guy who kills the mood on a jukebox believe me i go out to the yeah, bars you do. Yeah, I'm, you do. I'm playing like rooster by alice in chains you know oh my just, god that song's so good well i know but it's not really a party tune like no it's about a guy <laughs> who went to like vietnam he's like friend's brother in vietnam right yeah. Yeah, it's a great song. <laughs> so I want to dance to that at my wedding. So do you have that on vinyl? There you go. So what does your vinyl collection look like? How many? How many? I would show you it, but it's literally. I mean, I could. I just moved to a new apartment. It's literally all in boxes right now. <laughs> oh, no, I, those are like all records. I have like two thousand records. I have like a task rabbit coming like two days to put this like shelf so I can put them all. My my apartment looks um really bad right now but yeah i moved in a new place but i i yeah huge i have a very big record collection yeah i would imagine uh, yeah 2000 yeah. absolutely what what is a primary do you, do you put it in sections like songs i hate but i know i'm gonna have to need them for need them for weddings and then my stuff <laughs> i don't do i don't really do weddings anymore but um uh, I, which is nice um but no i i just uh it's it's like by uh i don't do it alpha alpha alphabetically i do it um i just do it by genre so i'll be like okay this is like new wave like this in 80s pop this like and it's like in those like you know those giant shelving units that are all like squares basically oh yeah square is like 80s pop and new wave this square is like 70s rock and roll and glam and funk this is like all soul like from the 50s and 60s and like wall of sound kind of girl groups this uh is all like I mean, I don't know. I have like jazz records too. I like don't really play those out. It's like home listening, but mm. and I'm like, okay, this is disco. This is like world, like Afro beat and like world stuff. This is like so. I just every square is like a different genre. Yeah, like I that. saw I saw something in something I was reading about you about like Italian disco music, some, something like that. That's really popular. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. So what yeah. is it? Is that a new thing? Italian no. disco. Itala Disco was Itala. like really the, the the guy who created the godfather of modern disco is Giorgio Moroder, who's an Italian dude who actually his like first single is like Son of My Father, which is like a power pop song. It's like okay. it sounds like trying like the sweet or something. Um What year but, are we talking that this started this came out? Well, his first his first song probably came out in the late sixties and okay. then oh. early seventies. He's a really incredible cover of Nights in White Satin by Moody Blues. It's like a disco. Mm. Like, at Ben, this is from like 76, you know? But he really created this like very cool modern sound. Same with like, and all these like Italian horror movies that came out, these like Dario Argento movies and stuff. Mm. Also, he used um, the soundtrack in those is like fantastic, like Tenebrae. Like, I think it's a Claudio... Simone or something like that but there's also Cerrone is this incredible disco art I mean you you probably when you hear the songs you're like oh I know this song like super sure. nature super nature oh yeah yeah yeah, nature. yeah that's all Italian, yes all Italian artists interesting um, okay yeah so they but they created this like really specific sound that then was like emulated by other disco groups because that American disco at the time was like the Bee Gees and a little more softer and this was like this was like, I mean, Georgia Moroder, by the way, discovered, like, created the sound of Donna Summer. He's okay. the producer on Love to Love You, Baby. And, Love Donna uh, Summer. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that song, too. I mean, you know, there's, like, this really cool story how she was in the, um, she was really young when she recorded that song. And there's, like, there's the, like, we know the radio edit, which is, like, three minutes long. But the real original song is 15 minutes long. And she has, like, a simulated orgasm on it. And no, note yourself, Twitter. find that recording. <laughs> you can know it's, it's literally like you can look it up on Spotify. It's this the original 12 inch, uh, like disco version. The maxi single is oh. is this like long 15 minute version. Giorgio Moroder, and it was just them two in the studio. And he turned off all of the lights and he had her sing it like totally in the dark. And Ooh. that's like how she felt like free to wow. I do remember back in the that's 70s, cool. there were a bunch of those. Uh, radio versions like you said and then there yeah. were the 15 minute 10 minute versions of the song that took up a side of the album which was pretty cool but i didn't spend time enough time listening to them because i course. have so many i have that's like oh i have so many disco like maxi singles they're all like 10 minutes long and they're just like but then it's like you can't <laughs> 
it's just like how cocaine was so ubiquitous back then where it's just like, it'll be like a five minute flute solo and you're like wow you guys are really confident about the sound of this because it doesn't sound like right yeah <laughs> you're yeah. like you're like veers off in this really crazy just like an organ like you're like what is happening it's yeah. just like an awfully of madness well like you said snort a line and it's like this is the greatest thing ever <laughs> You look at yeah, anything, it'll be good. So when when where how did the love for music start? Where I mean Um, isn't it like I don't know. I mean, I think it's like doesn't it find you or something? I don't know. I think that some people their senses are <clears throat> like some people are really into athletics and they're like, Oh, I was always really athletic or into sports, and it's just like something I did since I was a kid. And you don't really have a rhyme or reason, but it's something that you've always gravitated toward. I think I just have like a very particular ear and I, I think music is, I mean, everyone loves music. I think I, I can't think of if you meet somebody and they're like, I don't really listen to music, not a specific genre. They just say they don't listen to music run away. That person is, <laughs> Thank you. That is yep. terrifying. Like yeah. you have, cause it's such a, it's it's one of the most visceral forms of expression like a movie you have it requires like you know your sight and re requires attention and i can understand like how it's it's tough to maybe sit through a few hours or like invest time into something like music is there's just so much you couldn't listen to everything if you tried i mean i, I listen to music like all day every day and i'm still discovering new music all the time it's like really crazy but um yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what got me into it. I guess I just like my peer group. So I was like a punk geek. I was kind of like a weird kid. And then yeah. I like skaters. I don't know. I was like a skater dater. So How, how's like, that going now? Do you still attract to the skater dater kind of guy? Well, now I'm in my 30s. So I I I have to temper my desire with logic. By the way, I, I, yeah. I don't former skater, just in case you're, you know. Well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I, I still have my I still have my last skate deck in my garage at home. There's no there's no wheels or anything on it. But when I, wow, it okay. when I was in London, I I just got back a few days ago. And this guy I said something about I was like, oh, I was like, I was like, oh, like I said something about skating. Like I was like, oh, I was like a skater dater because I grew up in Orange County. And he's like, oh, you mean a ramp tramp? I'm like, <laughs> wow, it's better in that accent. <laughs> It's it's a word. I was like, no, not a ramp tramp, a skater dater, a ramp tramp. We now we just learned something new. I I know I learned something new. I've never heard that term before. Yeah, but... I hadn't either until <laughs> I learned. I hadn't either. Look, I was a skater and I never heard that term. So you can tell I, how good I was at skating. I wish I did. <laughs> Maybe it's a British thing. I don't Maybe. know. I thought they were polite there. I guess not. <laughs> I was like, yep. Skip that. But but everything they say kind of sounds polite. You know, you put in that accent and you know that I mean it sounds elegant. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Apparently it didn't work on her. You're not buying it. It didn't, it didn't yeah. not that time. No, it didn't, yeah, didn't buy not it. Not really. Not really. Um yeah, so no, you... I think your peer group kind of shapes your uh your interest when you're a kid because you're so yeah. uh Horus, you know, and mentally and everything and your taste. And so like literally like your best friend will just be like, well, my friend likes Black Flag. So I do, too. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, isn't that, <laughs> isn't course. that the great part of growing up, you know, it, as kids is exposing each other to new bands and stuff. I mean, that it's such a huge part of right? childhood, I think. Yeah. And I think it goes back to you said, if, if there was a friend that said, I don't really listen to music. Yeah. Get out of my house. <laughs> you also can't even like that's the thing. It's like when you're when you're young, you're also just so like readily available, like just emotionally and mentally that like things strike you, you know, you're like, hold, like, you know, that feeling of like listening to something for the first time when you're like 15 is like an unmistakable like sensation that like you rare like if something strikes me randomly, I'm like, holy fuck, it's such a yearned desire to have that experience. But it like happens so seldomly to like yeah. feel something special yeah it's know? like song lyrics from my teens that i can remember at, at 50 years old i haven't heard the song in a decade and i can still you know remember every lyric so there's a, yeah there's like a different part of your brain though that like memorizes um not memorizes but like just has like um like music you know like you, there's like this really sick documentary called alive inside and it's like people with alzheimer's and they and they we, they literally don't know their like brother's name but they'll put on like a rolling stones song and they can sing it completely oh, really oh that's yeah. that's cool 
it's a totally different part of your brain. It's what's just it, like, it? It's, it's called Alive Inside. It's an okay. incredible documentary. It's yeah, I want to really check cool. that out. I can't wait till I'm I'm senile and old. Oh, I can remember a song lyrics? I'm just going to sing song <laughs> lyrics. Yeah, right don't ex nobody you, nobody gets anything from you because you can be i don't remember you it's just I, me in a rocking chair being like i did it yeah. all milky and i'm like oh <laughs> fuck. I, I was gonna say do a, you know kind of be offensive to some nurses or something and in my wheelchair and then say i don't remember you know yeah, i'm just singing break stuff and shitting my pants <laughs> i'm like somebody somebody's a limp biscuit fan <laughs> so i gotta know because I know I know people who love Green Day and insist that Green Day is punk and you're you're a punk. Mm. Is Green Day punk? It's pop punk. Okay. It's it's, it's like, yeah. Punk wannabes. <laughs> no, I don't I mean I, I think they're good. I think Dookie is a great album. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Without a doubt. It's but at its, its pop, place. It's pop punk. I guess I'm like a little bit more of like because people I'll say punk is so vague. I'll be like, oh, I'm into punk. And they're like, oh, did you like like rage against the machine? And I was like, that's like I, I'm like really into like like early 80s hardcore, like everything on like SST and stuff like that. Like I love like and like um in like DC hardcore, like all of that. Like I love like Minutemen and like I love Minor Threat and like so, like that to me is like punk where it's like it's aggressive, it's loud, it's sharp, it's like a minute and a half long. Yeah. Nobody really knows how to play their instruments. <laughs> it's just like, it's really, that's just the, and like, even, and like, obviously like sex pistols and like, right. I'd say Stooges, maybe they're kind of more rock and roll punk, like on the, the sort of, you know, the Ramones, like the Ramones are like pop punk. And yeah. I would like, they're considered probably the first punk band, you sure. know, that's sure. what 74 that came out, 73. So, sure. um, yeah, I don't know. I guess I th I'd say Green Day was punk and then they got a little bit more like just a kind of a classic rock, not not a classic rock band, but they became. Yeah, anyway, yeah. yeah they started in punk and then because yeah. even um their first album is their first album Dookie or is it before, there's something before that? There's probably something. There's before. Probably, I don't know. Maybe their first album is punk and then like Dookie is like a little bit more mainstream because it has like um. You know, it has like some ballads on there and right, stuff right. too. So I don't know. I don't. I guess also parameters. I don't want to get all inside baseball with it because people are like, "What genre is that?" I'm like, I don't. I get really vague with it. I'm like, I don't know. It's like rock. Yeah. I just like some people are like it's actually um it's proto house <laughs> early. And you're like, all right, like it's no, you know, it's yeah. No, I hear right. it's it's just one of those. There's a very divided line on Green Day. It seems it like seems people. Like it. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I'm I'm not a fan, but, is, but I, is there any recent bands that you would say now that's freaking punk? DC Fontaines. Oh, I've heard. Okay, okay, they're great. They're in. I think are they Australian? There's like they might. I think they're Australian or they're British, but um, I'd say they're like pretty classically punk. Um, there's a lot of great punk Aussie bands. There's like Eddie Current Suppression Ring is really good. Um. Yeah, there's a lot of like, oh, there's a guy, Sugar Pit. His, I mean, that's like, it's like punk rock. It's really, it's really yeah. good. But he's in LA and he's making music now. All right. Yeah. So, did you, some of these musical genres, did you kind of grow into them as you were DJing or were you already kind of like into all of this stuff and, and you brought that to DJing? I think I kind of went Mac micro before I went macro so like I literally was listening to like more obscure shit like I would listen to like Black Randy the Metro Squad which is like a like from like San Francisco like a really like not that many people know about that band or like yeah. Hubble Bubble or something like that like a very like very specific like literally like Belgian punk music and then when I was like 18 I was like oh Al Green is pretty good like it I went <laughs> from like very specific narrow like only like if you look on spotify it's like you know it's like maybe like a few hundred monthly listeners or something like it's like not that many people even know about these bands i went really into that first and then i kind of got more into the mainstream stuff later actually um okay. so and i started dj when i was like 17 18 okay. um like right out of high school and yeah i i guess yeah i think my taste i would say definitely now um yeah, but DJing like affects my taste because I'm like, okay, I'm DJing at the now I DJ like clubs and stuff. And uh and it's fun because I can I mean I still get to play great fucking music and it's music that I never even thought because I was such a 
again, I was really in the realm of like rock and like punk and stuff. Then I was like, oh, cool. I can like, I, I mean, God, I really love like early 90s, like Manchester kind of like house and and um, that sort of stuff. Like and like even like some techno stuff. And I never thought I would like even touch that. Like that was so out of the depths of what I you know, I liked like butthole surfers. And yeah, now I'm like, yeah. oh, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, oh, happy Mondays. Like, it's like, they're, I guess they're, they can have a confluence. I don't know. But yeah, I. It's funny. The it's only, definitely the only different for DJ stuff yeah. from when you started to now, as you said, that all that stuff. So not, not to say what, what do you, the difference is when you started to now, but um, when you do it now, how do you incorporate your old music that you love into the shit that you think the younger crowd wants to hear? I think it's like, well, when I do vinyl, it's definitely, it's like pulling from like a very specific record collection. So I think I'll always like, I'll put on like, you know, I still like when I was like 14, 15, I was like, you know, I loved like T-Rex and like Bowie and stuff. And so like, I still play that out quite a bit and it's very palatable and it's pretty mainstream and it's easy to, or like Roxy music and stuff. Like that's something that I feel like I grew up with that like, as you know, like, yeah, Velvet Underground, like that's like 14, 15, like those were like my bands. And then now when I like bring my vinyl out and I DJ, I, I play a lot of that stuff to kind of warm up. And then I'll get into like the more like funk and disco and stuff like that to make people dance. It's like, uh, so I feel like I still carry it with me because I'm like, yeah, I'll play, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Do you, do you ever incorporate your comedy into DJing between songs or do you wait for yeah, someone to request something? I'm like, oh, well, what's the deal? Well, well, what's the deal? I'm like scratching a, Pry a Richard Pryor record. Um, <laughs> no, they're separate entities. I, I, I have a friend named Doug Lusenhop. He goes by DJ Doug Pound and he's a fucking hilarious, incredible comedian, great writer. He's worked on a bunch of great TV shows like the Eric Andre show in Portlandia and stuff. And he has like a whole bit where he's a DJ and he like, it's a comedy bit where, but he plays a DJ and he, like he mixes all these tracks and it's hilarious. So he's, I don't know. Yeah. I, that's not, I'm like a pretty straight stand up and then I'm like a pretty straight DJ. Okay. Yeah. I don't feel like I'm an experimentalist in that way. I'm not like crossing like, you know, like some comedians they do like, like they're, they're doing some cool shit with like a fucking effects loop pedal and stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> I just talk to Mike. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We could talk music all night. And I want, I want one, one more music question before I, we I want one too. Okay. Well, one, two ask music <laughs> questions. I just want to know, do you ever create like a uh, public playlist like on Spotify? You... Uh, yeah. Just follow me on Spotify. I have so many. Okay. I got to so check many. that out. Cause... Like very specifically like curated, like they're like some of them, the name is in like, it's like, I have like a great soul playlist, a funk playlist, really good. Like some are really specific and some are just like, oh, I was like one day I was like walking through the park and I like put this kind of like list of 20 songs together or I put this like, so I'll just kind of have collections of stuff. But it, I mean, I, yeah, I have so many, like 200 playlists in there at least. Nice. So, nice. I will fun. check that out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and that's on Spotify just under your um, name. name. Tina Tar. Yeah. yeah. All right. There you go, everybody. Yeah. Go check it out. It's cool. good. You'll dig it. Termin I'd say I'd recommend Terminally Chill is my best stuff. That's like my favorites of everything. And then here okay. and now it's like the master playlist of everything. Okay. But okay. Terminally Chill is like my my favorites. And it's probably right. like a 500 song playlist. So nice. nice. So, so my last song, my last question about music is I know at one time you had the uh, all girl, all vinyl. So whatever happened with that? How did how come that is that still going? Well, that was started by my friend and I, Victoria Rollins. She's a DJ still in Los Angeles. And we started, God, that was like over a decade ago. Um, it's just like, <laughs> it, 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 it was, you know, there's so much, like most of the people that are vinyl DJs, it's a very, like, it's pretty male dominated. Like if, you know, most, I, I would just notice that like when I was DJing, I mean, still even now it's like, I mean, two of the things I do, like comedy and, and DJing are very, I'm I'm a mm -hmm. minority in the, you know, the scene. Yeah. Um, but it, I think it was just like, okay, there's a concept here where it's like girls that are playing vinyl that are like good at it, you know, like Victoria and I, we pitched that night, we pitched this kind of concept of like, this is a collective where we can have 
female DJs from like all over come and play vinyl. And that's really, it's, it's really simple and it kind of, and it's easy. It's like all girls, all vinyl. That's it. And we pitched it to this club in LA called no vacancy. And we had a residency there every Thursday for seven years called all girls vinyl. And it only stopped because of the pandemic. So, and then I moved to New York. Wow. Yeah. So that was like pretty much the only reason, but I think that it's like the concept kind of lives on, but it's not, it wasn't like a DJ agency or anything like that. It was just like, Victorian eyes night that we would host other female DJs that were, you know, vinyl collectors and that's cool. And stuff. I mean, that's that's cool. cool. The, the, the different story when you look at your the Instagram account for all girls all vinyl. That's why I brought it up. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know there was. I mean, it's just <laughs> cool. I, I I don't even think probably somebody uses the name now. Or, you know. Sure. sure. Know. Yeah. Okay. They're just okay. over. I lied. One, one oh, more thing. One more thing. Nope. One more thing about music, because you are the first guest, and I should have worn the shirt tonight. I have a shirt that I custom made, and it's a can of Pepsi, and it says, "All I wanted was a Pepsi." And I've over, I've asked over and over again, if anybody in the comments can tell me what this is from, I will give them a fucking shirt. Thank you. Suicidal tendencies. Yeah, suicidal tendencies. Institutionalized. It was in. Um, it's on the Repo Man soundtrack, which I have on vinyl. It's oh, I didn't know it was songs. on that soundtrack. Yeah, great. yeah, it's a, it's that's one of a the best, great soundtrack. That's the one of the best soundtracks like ever. It has like yeah, TV I had Party that. by Black Black Flag. It has um the Modern Lovers. It has like Pablo Picasso by the Modern Lovers. It has um what else? The plugs. Um, it's fucking great. But yeah, it has institutionalized. Well, we were already going to send you a shirt at the end of the podcast, but now we'll send two or something. So, oh my god, I was like, <laughs> I know exactly what that is. Yeah, I just want a Pepsi, just a Pepsi, and she wouldn't give it to oh, me. I've got my, I've got my now eight year old daughter loving that song. So it's really good. And there's yeah. so I, I just have such a soft spot in my heart for that kind, just like that style of music. Suicidal tendencies are also like I think that's another thing. They're all those bands, like they're all from Orange County. Like, yeah. You know, and so it's like Black Flags from Hermosa Beach, like they're all and, you know, I, it's obviously like, you know, I didn't grow up in the in the 80s. Um, so it's like, you know, I grew up like in the 90s, but there's still that re- reverberation of like there's Adolescence, Agent Orange, TSOL. All those bands are from Orange County and they're yeah. fucking great, yeah. you know, so and like Misfits is like from L.A. and like X and all, you know, it's like there was it just where I grew up, there was such a cool incredible music scene and like yeah Minuteman is from san pedro yeah. it was like you know there it's just it it's still like even you know a, a decade later whatever what i was kind of in the you know i guess it was like more in like the early 2000s it's like 20 years later <laughs> i like i i mean it was still there you know yeah. there's still like it's, yeah. it's cool yeah fuck yeah and that explains why you're into sk- you were, were into skaters because all of that music that you're talking about is all the music i recognize from from my skating. days of skating yeah, skate videos yeah yeah, yeah black like flag Starry yeah. and stuff yeah like all of that circle jerks dead kennedys mm-hmm. all that good shit yeah it's so good but yeah all that's from orange county Nice. Like, nice. Well, not not Dead Kennedys. Where are they from again? I don't know. I never got into it enough to know where people were from. Right. Suicidal Tendencies, I did because they were one of my favorites. I mean, I still listen to them almost daily. So I'm such a dork about it. I have like, I guess I just have a good memory for that stuff. Where I'll be like, Jill Biafra was actually once quoted <laughs> saying, "Like I have like it's just. I mean, maybe that's why I can't do math." Because I just have like stupid facts about like lead singers in my brain or something. Well, you are that's, ob- that's more important. You're obviously an artist, so math isn't all that important. I mean, we, we like we said in the intro, not only we've talked now for a half hour on DJing, and you're also a comedian and an actress. And and I have to say, just watch, just watching your acting reel, a brilliant actress, Aww, very, very good actress. I want the Red Raincoats movie. I have to see where where can somebody see that. Um, I mean, I don't know. I would recommend seeing something else. That's like, really? so, I, did, oh, I just that... did, it was my first feature and I was really young. I'm not speaking ill of it at all. I just okay. was like, I was like 18 years old. And so, um, oh, wow. Yeah, I was really young. And so I, I would say like the latest thing that I, I was the latest thing that I did. Well, I'm trying to think of where we're not wrapped yet, but, um, I'm on a feature now that I'm really excited about called bright brighter side of uh, bright side of life but that's not going to come out for like another year that's in like we're yeah we're not even wrapped on that but there's a movie called adventures and success that you can see on amazon prime and stuff and that's really good and we got like into a bunch of festivals and that's like a mockumentary about a wellness group that is 
mask. It's a sex cult masquerading as a wellness like startup group. Sure. Um, and it's like shot kind of uh, like Christopher Guest style. And the writer and uh, director were the incredible, like just really great. But yeah, I mean, all thank you for for the the compliment too. I but yeah, I've been acting for a long time, and I really I really care about it. I just shot something last night too for this other feature and it's all like vignettes and oh. um but yeah i i really love acting it's it's uh it I wish shows I it shows more. yeah yeah i wish i could do more it's such a like i mean it would be so cool to like be able to you know it's one of those things where it's like you can make a incredible living off of it but it's like such a small you're more likely to make money djing because there's so many places to do that and then with you know you really think about if you put everybody in the entertainment world into um, just like into one place, it, like it, it would be a very small town. Right. You know, it yeah. would be a very small town. And then the people that are recognizable, it's like this is a handful of people, truly, you know, that like are actually working consistently. Sure. Yeah. So it's small. So it's like you really it's it is talent and luck. You know, it's so much of that. And just like right place, right time. It's like the whole John Hamm thing where he was just literally like chipping away like started pursuing acting when he was like a teen basically like 18 something like that and then he just like did i mean he was he literally just like struck out for like 30 years and then he got cast as don draper yeah you know? and, and the rest is history that's now. All you yeah. Need, yeah and that's what everybody needs is that one break but right. so how did you get involved with the uh, adventures and success because it um, is such a strong movie and when you say christopher guess is it a comedy yeah, it's a comedy. Yeah. There's like um so the the director actually cast me years ago for a uh he like saw just he liked my look and cast me for a music video where I play a serial killer. Um like this town that keeps like losing people. It was for this group um this musical artist named College that they did the soundtrack for <laughs> Drive. Um oh, that movie, yeah. yeah. So the song's called Save the Day. The music video is beautiful it looks great and you can watch and your that. your name is actually x murderer yeah it is yeah <laughs> that's yeah. all yeah and so i just i kill like this this town just like it's losing people all the time and then i um i'm the killer i'm the, I'm the killer uh but that's how i met the director spoiler alert <laughs> yeah i think it's pretty apparent and from the get but uh yeah that's how i that's how i uh met the director jay boehm for uh adventures and success so we really hit it mm. off like we did not know each other he had just cast me um him and his dp and his art director we shot this yeah this music video for it was like three days in upstate new york in this kind of remote area in the catskills and it was so fun and we just like bonded and then you know cut to six years later doing adventures and success so i mean it's all like it's all the relationships you build you know yeah. with people and you know, if you're like good to work with and you're kind and you, you know, it's yeah. just people there's there is a reason why people get high. I mean, Christopher Guest would always hire the same actors over and over they did. again. Right. They did. Yeah. You know, well, those people are improvisers, too. And like if yeah. when you're like this person knows what they're doing, it's like, why would you not use them all the time? If he think, right. can understand his voice and what he's kind of, you know, Parker Posey is like, she's so brilliant. She's yeah. like, well, I was going to say, isn't that one of the greatest compliment is that the director or writer calls you back and says, I, I, I know I can trust you. I can know I can trust yeah. the way you're, you're going to do with my material. I mean, that's got to be huge. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. It's nice. We do, yeah. We do see that because we've talked to other independent filmmakers and you do notice that when you see a lot of their stuff that uh, the cast just keeps repeating over, you know, and they, they cast the same people in, in all their stuff. And because uh, it's independent, you don't have time to redo stuff. You don't have time to be like, you're not getting it. <laughs> well, and you get comfortable working with somebody. Like you said, yeah. they, 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 yeah. So they get your, like, there's a more of a shorthand. Like there's a reason why directors have the same director of photography. Mm -hmm. Like, you mm -hmm. know, Martin Scorsese would always use the same, like, you know, a director has the same casting, not cast, it's the same crew almost always. Like, sure. you know, if they can, because they just, there's a shorthand, there's an understanding of like, you know, makes things move quicker on set. And that's like, everything so yeah you know yeah so going back to red raincoat you did win an award for that i did yeah i didn't so, even i i let's mean, not skim I, over that that was for best actor 
So let's not skim over that. That's I don't know. I feel like some of the, I mean, I'm not trying to like be bashful or anything. It's not like that. I'm just like, I think some of the, the, I think I know sometimes when I do, like when I do good work, it's like getting off stage, like as a comedian, it's like, you know, when you did something that was like. Killed. You did well. And you're like, I did well. That was great. And I like explored and I did these new things. And that was really, really gratifying for me. And there's times you just go up there and you kind of just say the jokes that you are very prescriptive that you have and you get off stage and like you did, you were effective. You did well, but did you do well for yourself? Not really. Cause you didn't, you didn't like expand upon what you want to do. If that makes sense. I don't know if I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm being a little too like vague, but like, uh, I think it was just maybe I was just like really young and I was so new to everything it was like the first one of the first things I was like ever in. And so I look back at that movie and I'm just like, oh, my God, like, that's not like, what am I doing? That's so like, I just was really forced and like, <laughs> I was so young, you know, and so sure. like I and I, I think some of these like, in film, it's interesting, like, these a lot of these like festivals and stuff like people won't talk about those, but like all these festivals, they're just like, they're a pay to play sort of thing too, where it's sure. like, there are like those things where it's like, I, I feel like sometimes these, I don't know. I'm like, I don't want to say too much. I just, like, <laughs> I, I just like, I don't, I don't think it was like that. I did a great job. I feel like maybe, uh, and I'm not, it's not me being like, Oh no, I'm, I'm nothing. I'm like, I know that I'm good. I just, I, I don't feel like that movie reflected my a talent and ability as an actor. And it has nothing to do with the movie. It has to do with how young I was when I did it. Nina, just tank the compliment. All right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Thank you so much. <laughs> but it's that's I feel we talk to enough comedians and we know comedians aren't real good with compliments very often. So <laughs> I'm okay with them. Okay. I think it's so much it's it's when you fight somebody on a compliment, it's almost like you're making them do more work by being like, prove to me what you said. Right. Prove, like, like explain to me more the thing. Sure. Like, how great I am. Thanks. Like <laughs> Just be like, thanks. Yeah, yeah. I feel well, like I only talk about it with like, if I if a comedian's like great set, I'm like, eh, it wasn't that great because blah, 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 blah. That's like, I'm like talking to a colleague. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. talking to a coworker. But I wouldn't say that sure. to like a random person. If they said like great set, I'd be like, thanks, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of your sets, um, you seem to be killing it on the comedy scene. We got to let's not go too long without we have <laughs> we have, we have <laughs> gone quite a while there's a lot of things to talk about guys stop doing so much stuff so much such amazing work you i know? guess i'm but... trying i'm literally a woman desperately and in, ineffectually in just just grasping and just like <laughs> something it's like a money i'm like in one of those machines where i'm like something's gonna take right i'm literally like it's like judy garland energy where i'm just like someone's gonna do something like offer me something right <laughs> more in desperation no it's interest i actually am very interested in all these things i do and i'm, I'm lucky that i do but yeah. um, yeah, it, se- it seems that way it seems like it, you know each thing that you dive into you do you excel at it so it's kind of how do you and you have fun doing it why give it up then yeah and i care about it like i mean there's definitely things i've tried and i realized it's like ah oh, this isn't for me you know what i mean but like sure. you know there this yeah like what like what's something you try that you're like this isn't for me and i'd be i'm curious because i can't imagine what it would be I mean, this is like race car really, driving. I don't. Yeah, this is really specific, but I guess like as an actor, like a big way to make money, like I guess this is more so like a while back, but like would be like commercial acting, like mm-hmm. you would have a commercial agent and everything. You would audition for like Tide commercials and you can make like a, re- I have a lot of friends that made like a pretty decent living off like, you know, you just get a few commercials. I mean, still to this day, one of my dearest friends, she works on commercials all the time as she could, and it's great. Yeah. Um, I had like a commercial agent and I was like going out for these for like years in my like, you know, yeah, like a decade ago, like in my early twenties. And like, I, I just was like, wait, there was like a moment where I was like, why am I, I'm driving so far so I can, like, I, I'm driving like an hour so I can go into a room and be like, I'm blue. And then walk out and be like, why am I doing this feels so horrible. Yeah. So that's something I like tried to do for like a number of years. And then I was like, I'm not really getting booked doing these things and I don't enjoy it. Yeah, and so. it doesn't feel like acting. It's more like it's like modeling for yo yo play. That's like what it. It's not <laughs> literally. We'll just like be like walk from here to here and like mime eating something. You yeah. know, like no satisfaction out of that. No, no. So I, I, it's it's so actually amazing when you realize something's not worth your time anymore. 
You're just like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. And yeah, it's, you're it's just, a big it, thing to be able to to uh -huh. say, turn that down and know that there could be money coming from that and be like, it's it's just not for me. I also wasn't really getting like booked that much. And I was just like, maybe it's not like you just have to also listen to the environment that you're in and be like, oh, is this like something that's like, again, is it like there the, it, it, things choose you too? you know what I mean? Like things yeah. choose you. I think a lot of times people can be really forceful in the things that they want and things do come to you. Like, I mean, I don't know. It wasn't coming to me and I was trying and I was like, I don't, and then once I had, like, I was like, I don't even like, wait, I don't even like doing this. I'm just doing it because I feel like I have to. Sure. And when you make that space for yourself, like, oh, I'm not actually, I'm not really into fucking rock climbing. I'm like, <laughs> not really into it. I don't like doing it. I don't want to fucking go anymore. And you're like, oh my God, now I don't have to do that. And it's like, so, um, it's just like a big relief. You're like, oh, thank God I don't have to do that. <laughs> like, yeah. I, that's for sure. Not, and then you can focus more of your energy on something that you you love and excel at, like your stand up. So when you get into stand up, what uh, what is your process of writing songs? Do you use songs? Did I say songs? You did. Yeah, your brain's. I'm going to put bit. that aside for a little bit. <laughs> so much music. Now. No, no. Yeah, we talked about music so much. And I, where I was going with this. Was during your, do you use any like interactions with people at your DJ gigs in your comedy act? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everyone is my muse. <laughs> Everyone is now like mostly guys that I like have like slept with or hooked. Like I'm, I'm somewhat recently single and now I'm like dating and I'm like, wow, this is like oh, such a barrage of material. Just like <laughs> Bring it things on. that you guys say is You're going to so... see so many DMs after this episode comes out. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> now, guys are crazy on the internet. They'll be just. Half of them get... will be from me alone. I get, I get, un, I get unsolicited dick pics. Like, oh. like still. Yeah, it's crazy. Like I'm just and and also one sided conversations. There's people that have talked to themselves for five years to me like I'm, I'm not kidding like like literally just completely talking to themselves oh like responding oh. things like asking like like for like five six years like okay. multiple. that's yeah. worse than an unsolicited dick pic yeah it's really <laughs> it's called parasocial relationships and they're people oh. that they think that because they see you intimately on the internet you know they see you maybe uh in your home or whatever you know then they they they're missing this kind of like, oh, this veneer of like, oh, well, that's like somebody I follow. And they think you're like friends, I think, you know, or like lovers. One of the I two. don't know you. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know. They start oh. to think you're talking to them when you're on stage <laughs> instead of performing an act. And do you get do you ever get nervous? Have you ever had any stalker issues or anything where what, this shit gets a little too serious? Yeah, I have one. You yeah. have one currently? <laughs> yeah, thank no, you. No, years ago. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, he had to, I had to like show his picture to like uh door guys at mm. like venues that would DJ at and stuff like that. But like, you can't let him in. Oh fuck. Yeah. Yeah. So what is he your didn't understand like his he didn't like I it was like I he just was not he's a little troubled, I think. So yeah, I don't sure. I feel bad for him. <laughs> hey, hey, it's not just guys. We've all seen baby reindeer. Women do it too. I know, yeah, and I think <laughs> it's harder. I actually think for dudes like because like a man is it's so easy to be like this man is scaring me and yeah. then be like yeah yep. he could literally hurt you could physically like and it, when a woman it's like okay like yeah, yeah, yeah. suck it suck it up dude it up. <laughs> it's a compliment you got a girl you know, I, you're like yeah. you fuck her? and like i think a lot of guys like that's the thing a guy would like fuck his stalker be like okay okay we gotta cut it off okay okay but he would like let he would like open the like a guy will put his dick in crazy and then be like whoa she's acting crazy i'm like you knew she was crazy and you fucked her don't do that you know well, don't do that the, the only reason we started this podcast was for him to fuck stalkers <laughs> it's not working but <laughs> you're like turns out i have no fucking stalkers um <laughs> so you should become stalkers after you fuck them <laughs> well a few of them i'm not gonna get into it but whatever um you just gotta decide <laughs> there's crazy both sides there is crazy clarify that. all right so when did you get in when did you get into comedy um god i had a what? question damn you what too slow too slow oh oh i got into comedy uh i started i was always pretty funny uh like as a kid and it like mitigated bullying and so that was <laughs> that was very helpful and then I'd say, gosh, around like 18, I was like into acting. And then I took a like UCB class when I was like 21. 
And then I was like doing improv and I, and I think it was in my, like used to be like 301 or something. I met these guys that they were like, we're going to like open mics. You should come. You're funny. Let's, you know. And I was like, oh, I don't know like what I talk about. And then I had kind of realized unbeknownst to me that I actually had like been consistently writing jokes, but I just, they were observations. Like it was like journaling, but they were jokes. And I was like, oh, I guess I do have like a few minutes of material. So I started doing open mics when I was like, yeah, I guess 23 years old. Um, and then, yeah, I was just like, you know, you suck at first and you just keep going and maybe you get a laugh and a smattering of them here and there. And you're like, okay. And then, I mean, the more you do something, I think that we just have, we're very uncomfortable with being amateurs. So we don't pursue anything new because it's kind of embarrassing, especially the older you get, it's hard to be new at something, you know? So it's like, you don't want to be you know, consider like, like, oh, I'm dumb at this thing. It's hard to learn things just the older you get because the rigidity, just not only of your like mind and spirit, but just your actually ability to absorb information and data like really dwindles as well. Sure. But I think when you're younger, you just are like, fuck it. You just fling yourself into things. So I'm, I'm really happy that I was pretty fearless when I was young. And that's when I like started DJing and acting and doing comedy. And then I just have been doing, and now it's like, I'm good at all of those things, but it's because I've been doing all of those things for a long time. You know, you got, you got your yeah. 10,000 hours in on each one of them at this point. 100%. Yeah. Sorry. Ask your question. You forgot mm -hmm. it. Didn't you? No, I was just going to so say together. <laughs> We're not gay. <laughs> it's a really will they, won't they? Will Ross and Rachel, huh? I think I think one of our last guests at the last question, she says, wait, are you guys together? Are you guys lovers? I mean, the beard and dimples is like also very like that. Is... You could take that either way. We'll do. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey if, it well, gets us, if it gets us more views, fuck yeah, we're gay as shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. <laughs> to me, the funniest was when, the you know, when he started uh, and he's like, yeah, I was wondering if you guys are a bunch of gay fellers. <laughs> I was just trying to figure it out. We're like, yeah. Um. Funny. I, I, thought that I mean was funny. you're yeah that was funny fellers fellers um well my question was at the time it's not right now but i was like what is your first reaction when you get that dick pic do you respond with a no, uh, comment no, do you I block them oh okay yeah so oh. you like sarcasm back to them or something no no you cannot open that door a, a person who you do not know whatsoever sends you a nude <laughs> picture of themselves they are out of, they're unhinged. Like they're, that's out of the, you're out of your fucking mind. I've been, I was, I've been trying to tell him that for years, but he still sends them. <laughs> Again, I've, I've pointed this out. I have recently married for the third time. I know what I'm doing. Okay. I know how this works. I know how to attract a female. <laughs> Three times. Third time's a charm. They say this one's going to stick. I really like this one. <laughs> okay, that's good. I won't Glad say you anything about how I feel. And hey, I'm 50, okay? I, it's not like I'm 35 years old and I've been married three times. Like, one of them actually lasted a decade, so. That's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck right. off. You can fuck it up eventually. So, yeah. I always... I always say you can't get to your fifth wife and you don't, you know, marry the third. So, you marry the third. You can't get to your, you know, so we're getting yeah. there. Can't make an omelet unless you crack some. You know, there you go. I'm in the face. But uh... <laughs> so be besides, his, you could probably go off on him for hours, but we'll just uh, cut it off. I, I think you I think you got stuff brewing in your no, head. No, I'm not going to. No, we're I, I, I don't know. Either. No, I'm not going to say it. No, all right, wait. I, but you can. Do you, you know. do do you do roast comedy at all? Uh, <laughs> not really. Okay. I wish oh. I did. I want to. I just honestly, this is gonna sound so fucking lame. I'm like, I don't like being mean. But I don't think that sounds lame. We've talked no. to other people who yeah, say the same true. thing. Yeah. People are like, do, would you do roast battle? I'm like, no. Yeah. I I'm sensitive. I'm like, I don't want someone to say mean things to me, and I don't want to say mean things to somebody. And I love like one of my favorite comedians ever is Nikki Glazer, and she is like the roast man. I mean, she is like on another fucking level yeah, like yeah. so incredible yeah, she's and had a good I, month she's, <laughs> yeah. what she's done is like i mean god the tom brady stuff was so funny like her shit is she's, so good but she's she's always been funny on the roast yeah yeah she's so but that's like there isn't there is such a she's also so kind and like like sweet that i think <laughs> it like mitigate like it's interesting because i'm yeah. like 
I think people assume that I'm a bitch because I look like one, but I'm not. And then I think that they're surprised that I'm like sweet, you know? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I mean, I wish you'd be mean to him. I'm a little I, bit I, of a bitch, fine. I guess. I'm yeah. a little you all are a little bit. <laughs> want, so in your in your comedy, we'll you're not gonna roast him. I'll move on. So if in your comedy, since you travel back and forth from California and New York so much, do you find any jokes that don't that you that don't work in both places and how do you okay like i was just in london oh and yeah performing all the time there and so there's so many that that's like i mean culturally it's really similar to new york though so it's like but there's so many comedians like here that they'll have jokes about the subway and it's like that's great but like you can't do that stuff any like you like i have jokes about living in new york and like the amount mm -hmm. of like junkies and stuff like that on the street and like Obviously, can't do those in L.A., but like is, they're funny jokes and they're fun. But like, you know, it's like yeah. um, you just have to. Well, but I he's got a, quite a few junkies stuff. on the streets. I'm thinking, I mean, yeah, but there's there's like I guess they're, they're not the ones here. They're they're different. They're like a whole there's like the St. Mark's junkies here that like they okay. they lean a certain way that like is whatever it's a whole it just you're can you can be regional with your comedy. And like the thing is, it even just takes an adjustment like changing a word like for example in london i have a joke about like mountain dew mixing like mountain dew code red and milk together yeah, you do. i was <laughs> like i don't think they have mountain dew there i haven't really seen it but what i've seen a lot of people drink is dr pepper so i'm like i'll just say dr pepper because i don't want them to be like confused from like something so stupid as like i just a, re a reference like that but then and then you'd be surprised where you're like i have this like reference to the movie don't mess with the zohan and i was like what like do they know that that's like a pretty specific like adam sandler movie and i'm like do they know that and i'm like yeah they do like you have to also just try like when you're like you yeah. know in yeah. la or in like you know i did a tour like a all over the u.s and canada and that was like a very interesting thing of just like learning like there's bros everywhere like, and there's like dumb <laughs> masks everywhere like that's the thing is like i kind of thought my or like i do this kind of bro voice and i was like oh like like a surfer bro, like when they like talk like this, and I'm like, but there's this guy lives everywhere. He's there. He sounds a little different, but he like they all like they're just like oh, I fucking live in Massachusetts, but I talk like this, you know. <laughs> like they all they're either like surfer bros, but there's bros are everywhere. And yeah. I was like, oh, that's like universal. It's not just Orange County. No, no, we're everywhere. Oh my what? God. What uh you so you moved to New York is do you do you enjoy the comedy scene in New York better than than the LA comedy scene? I, I I'm guessing you can get up more often in New York and yeah, it's a lot better here. There's so many more shows and and so much like availability for like you know there's just there's a lot more. This is like a live theater town, so people yeah. want to see comedians. They want to you know it's it's great. I mean that was a, the primary reason I moved here was like I want to do more comedy and um. God, yeah. It, I mean, it's it's very functional here. It's great. I mean, yeah. and I let's. You, I, I hope you take this as a compliment. You 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 come across as more of a New York comedian than an LA comedian. Yeah. You've got the edge to you, and uh, yeah. most people think I'm from here. Yeah, I can see oh, that. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I right? Yeah, yeah. They're like, yeah, which is cool. Like, it's like they're like, oh, like I thought you're like a New Yorker, like very East Coast. I'm like, it's just because I talk fast. Yeah, <laughs> deep voice, but but. <laughs> Yeah, not. I mean, I let I, I'm going to LA in a few days. It's fine. I I like I like LA. My my mom's still there. My dad. It's great. I love it. But yeah, uh, I lived there for my whole life, and I'm very happy I live here now. It's like cool. serves me better. Cool. I love yeah. it. And and yeah, let's talk about look. Let's just touch on before we go. Uh, your podcast, which I've been listening to, Girls on Guys. Um. So when you started your podcast, obviously it was like, hey, everybody has a podcast, right? I mean, two douchebags can have it, so why can't you? <laughs> so <laughs> how did you, was it, did it start out as talking about sex about the whole time or how did that yeah. morph into that? Actually, it was produced by um, Friday Beers, which is like this great, like, I mean, they're, they're such a great like media company. They uh, are based in LA and they were like, started super small, like literally like operated out of a house and I knew the CFO because he hadn't followed my kind of comedy career because he was working at CAA, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Really sweet guy. And he's like, he's trying to get more creators and everything. So like, they basically like, were like, we want, I think I was a guest. That's what happened. I was a guest on like their podcast. Like they looked with the first podcast they had like on the network. And then I'm pretty good at talking. 
the on podcast and so yeah. they were like they just were like we're gonna give you your podcast your own and they kind of like put it together where they're like and this is gonna be your co-host and it was sky liam and him and i just and it was perfect so it was like i'm 10 years older than him he's like what can like young boys in their early 20s like learn from like a woman in her like early to mid 30s about what is like like sex and dating and so we would have female comics on when I mean, you listen to it so you get it but like yeah. It was really there. They kind of masterminded it. And then it just really struck. Like it just really got popular. Um, And then we were doing that for a while. Then I, you know, this all is LA and I'm in New York. So then I would have to go. Then Liam ended up, they, they took my baby boy from me and they put his own podcast. But, but now that podcast is like blew up and it's so funny. It's called almost Friday or no, it's called. Yeah. It's called almost Friday. Shit. It is called Almost Friday, but it's him. Uh, it's Liam Culla and and um, Will uh, Angus, and they are. It's just it's they're great, and they literally. I think they just hit like a uh, hundred thousand subscribers on like YouTube or something. Like they're they're crushing it. And anyway, then I started doing the podcast by myself and just booking the female like female and male comics and doing like you know. And it's just it, it was just a lot of work. <laughs> but I, I did that. Just- it was it's a great podcast but then like it's discontinued now and okay. but hmm. then i recorded some i have this new project but i don't think i'm going to release it until the fall so i don't even want to announce it yet because it's you still... can come back in the fall and tell us about it yeah okay be... okay <laughs> uh, yeah that would actually be really that's a great idea because then i can once i want to promote it again but i think i i yeah i have to do it i did yeah, i did the podcast with the ex so you know have to oh. uh, space to not like with he was producing it though but sure, it was like sure. I just were like, we should not talk for a while. And then we'll, <laughs> well, well, you definitely hit it on the head because you 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 do a wonderful job talking. So it's a great and, and you're very flow. And I enjoyed listening to your talk and your subject matters are all over the place. And, it, you know, kind of all over the place, but kind of in the same zone. <laughs> they are. So I haven't been able to get to them all, um, but I, I'm definitely I, trying to. Um, I try to be succinct, but I, I just I do talk a lot and I. <laughs> I, I I I'm very hyper aware. I warn people. I go. I'm sorry. I talk a lot, and I hope that I try to utilize word economy and just like try to say. I'm like I try to talk fast and say the most amount with saying the least amount. But I end up just yeah being a lot. Well, you know, you're an ideal podcast guest because mm-hmm. nobody wants. To, we we know this for a fact. We do solo episodes and we get like. <laughs> I don't want to say how many views, but not as many views as we get <laughs> when we have the guests. lower thousands <laughs> and the bigger. So yeah, we get a good amount, but yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. we get more. Bro, we dude, so don't funny. fucking let on. <laughs> he, get, he gets mad at me when I say actual numbers. He, like, he can't do that. So, wow, are so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so we know you have a heart out. You got to go DJ tonight. I oh, do. Fun. I gotta. I gotta get ready and. Yeah, like... I want to ask. I want to. Do you have? I have one final. So yeah. if you got no, I just want to. Bring it up again that yeah, yeah when your new project comes out we'd love to have you back Absolutely. because this has been a joy and uh but I, the heart out we usually don't have a hard heart out so i want to know an invitation i want to know fuck mary kill acting dj and comedy oh my god such a great question um kill dj and unfortunately i just been doing it for so long so i'm like that's sure. like the and and i've already like i i feel like i've hit the most like the most you could be successful as like a dj uh in terms i'm not a musician or producer or anything i just am like a record collector like kind of playing songs out dj i'm like okay i did that that's so a kill dj um fuck comedy and mary acting yeah oh. but i heard that fuck mary kill you're supposed to do um fuck kill sexless marriage <laughs> It can't be. Oh. It can't be because the marriage. You think like, oh, like no, I'll choose the one that I want to fuck all the time. And you're like, Mm-mm-mm, I've you used that fuck. before. Yeah, so yeah. That, I like that. That we're <laughs> we're, we're rewording. That. I like that. That's perfect. Yeah. Because it is. You're right. <laughs> it works. Yeah. I definitely use that as an excuse when you get the two that are like, ah, who cares? I'll fuck one, marry the other. <laughs> yeah, but then fucking becomes the, the actually the most valuable. Yeah. It, right. Right. But I always took fucking as like kind of once. Like you you yeah, you do it one last time. It's one time. That's the thing. The fucking is like one time you get to fuck them or you have to like you have to share space with them sexlessly. And it's all hell. Like all of it's hell. Uh, you like you're like <laughs> you, fuck, you fuck the one that you want never to see them again. Yeah. You choose one that you can cohabitate with. But you. I mean, when you do it that way, to be honest, 
sexless marriage is the worst of all of them. Like you're going to kill oh, the sex. <laughs> sexless marriage is a roommate and you can have a great roommate. I don't know. Oh, that's I guess you guys are in a sexless marriage. Well, <laughs> as far as you know, it's sexless. <laughs> it is so far. You never know. <laughs> well, thank you so much. You're an absolute delight. And yeah, you know, like, like he said, like, I would love to have you back anytime. So. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And for sure, I think like probably in the fall at some point. But yeah, the other project, it'll be a limited series. It's eight episodes of a podcast that uh, I put a lot of time and energy into um, with my ex, who is also very smart and cool. And uh, but yeah, that will be released at some point. I will get back to you about awesome. that. But, uh, thank you for having me on, guys. This has oh, been really you. fun and I really appreciate it. And thanks for all the lovely things. Thank you. Have a good night DJing. Yeah. Good luck. All right. Bye, guys. And those black records. See ya. (laughs) Bye. Thank you for listening. The tavern is closed for now, but we'd love to have you back for more fun next time. Seriously, though, get your asses out of here.